If you're easily offended, run now. That's your only trigger warning. 58% of American black women that have children have at least one child by multiple different men. In other words, 58% of black women have two or more baby daddies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now y'all TikTok has been suppressing my videos a little bit recently. I don't know why, but so I need y'all to like this. I need y'all to comment on it because we need to have this conversation. According to a study that was done by Cassandra Dorius, who was a postdoctorate fellow at the University of Michigan Institute for Social Research, mothers with multiple fathers for their children are more likely to be underemployed, to have lower incomes and to be less educated. According to the study, families with multiple fathers are stressed out with issues often arising about how to consistently raise a child in different households. I got a question because I've heard this used about the fact that 59% of black women that have kids have two or more baby daddies. I've heard this used by the pundits on podcasts. I've heard this used by the manosphere. I've heard this used by a lot of men that want to just bash the shit out of women. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, I accept your premise, but here's the thing. Typically th one, this study does not take into account the amount of women that were married before they had kids or then got divorced and got remarried and had children. This study doesn't bring that up. It doesn't take that into account, but I good point wonder why he would bring that up, but good point. What I want to know from the men is this. Typically speaking, because I've had conversations with thousands of women at this point, they all say, especially the ones that have multiple children by different men, they say, after my first marriage ended, I became celibate. I, I said, I'm going to hold out. I'm not going to do this. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to wait to have sex again. That kind of thing. The men they were encountering that were black men were saying, well, you already somebody's mama. Why not? Why I got to wait to get the draws? Why I got to wait to clap the cheeks? Why I got to wait to get the and I'm sitting here thinking to myself, I'm like, oh, you know what? You're right. Mm. You're absolutely right. Before we sit up here and try to come and try to damn and condemn women for having more than one child out of wedlock. Now, granted, granted, there are a large percentage, a growing percentage of women that want children without getting married, to which I say, y'all know my opinion on that. I think that's stupid. Right. I, I think that's stupid. I'm always think that's stupid. I agree. But to the men that want to bash women that try to be celibate afterwards, this still proves to me men have no problem sleeping with and reproducing with women that they supposedly deem the unworthies, the undesirables, because I thought single mamas went. I thought they were the untouchables. I thought they were the undesirables. So why is it that women that have children both in and out of wedlock with one man already still get sexual access from these supposed high value kings of the earth? Like the math doesn't math to me. And as I investigate this further, I'm really starting to think you could either use this to bash women. Okay. Or you could use this to say men are so hypersexual in this world today that they don't really give a about about no legacy. They don't give a about having multiple children in one household that have been fathered by multiple different men. They don't give a about being statistics. They don't. Because if they did, this number of women that have children by more than one man would be drastically lower than what it currently is. So y'all tell me if I'm right, wrong, or indifferent. If you've made it this far, please let me know you made it this far. Put a church, put a church down there in the comments if you got this far. Because my thing is this: if men are supposed to be the leaders of society, mm -hmm. if we're supposed to be the head honchos, we're the, the the patriarchs, right? We lead society, right? Why are we leading in creating broken houses mm. and in being active participants in the perpetuation of broken houses? Because the math ain't math. Break the copy; it'll make you feel better. All right, so um. I'll say this. There's a few things he said there that I can touch and agree on. Number one, he said that he believes that men hold a level of responsibility. Yes. And I think that does get overlooked. I don't mention it as much. There are plenty of other men who don't mention it as much. And I think men can be just as delusional. And if you sit there and say, no, they can't. Yes, there's a certain group of men that could be just as delusional as women when it comes to saying things like, well, why were you clapping the cheeks? of a 304 when they get a 304 pregnant but they will be the same people calling those chicks out right we see it happen all the time but i disagree on a couple of points and i'm going to talk about those points but i can respect the fact that he talks about the struggling families because my as someone who is a new father someone who currently has just had a son the way i think about this situation now that I've experienced the challenges that come with raising up a newborn, me going through that in my marriage, and thinking to myself, there are chicks online who are championing being single mothers by choice, and they don't have the resources to provide for those children. To me, 
is crazy. It's even crazier. I used to feel very strongly about this. Now I feel even more strongly about this particular topic. But I also agree with what he said there that the chicks who purposely become single mothers are insane. And the men, the baby daddies who are out here having kids left and right, they are insane as well. Disagreements. He said, based on the study, they didn't really differentiate if these were women from previous marriages. Right? That's, that's an easy one. Why were they divorced and their husbands? Chances are it's, it's for a ridiculous reason. And we know women really initiate majority of those divorces. That's one. Two, no one is saying that the men who are choosing to sleep with these women don't share in responsibility. No. The argument there is, as a woman, the consequences that you will face if you have a child out of wedlock with a man who's not yet committed to you and building a family are a lot larger, are a lot heavier than the consequences a man will face. You're naturally attached to that baby with chemicals, oxytocin during the pregnancy. It's a lot harder for you to just walk away from that baby on a chemical level let alone the emotional attachment you build once you have that baby, you're going to not only be the one who's going to be the primary caretaker just based on biology, but your life is significantly altered the most. That baby's attached to you. Baby does not have any autonomy when it's an infant. Right? If you care, you can't just leave and go work a job if you're the primary caretaker of that baby. You share the majority responsibility and you hold key and access to your body. So it's not about those men not knowing that they played a role. It's about who's ultimately responsible for guarding their body, their womb, which leads to that final point he made where he said, well, if we men are supposed to be leaders, then aren't we leading these women astray? I used to actually have this, I don't know if I still have the video, but I used to actually have the same perspective. I'll say like a few years back, when I was pondering these topics and just kind of thinking to myself, like, you know, trying to approach this from different ways, which is why I'm showing some understanding here, because I get where he's coming from. The problem with that is a, a quote that I think I first heard it from Ola Tomasi that goes, responsibility without authority is slavery. Responsibility without authority is slavery, meaning you cannot be responsible for women who don't give you authority over them. Because if all you have is responsibility, then you are a slave. A slave has the responsibility, but no authority to decide when they are going to work. They have no rights. And to say you're responsible for these wayward women who don't view you as a man who's a leader, who's masculine, etc., is saying that they can act however they want, but you are a slave to making sure that you suffer the consequences of their decisions, which would be ridiculous. I think the other thing too that um, is very obvious, I know people are tired of this, but this is the truth. There are more women out here than ever who believe that there's no use in getting married before they have kids. Because they think, well, marriage can never end. No, no, no. You're most likely going to end that marriage. When it comes to that topic in particular, I'm seeing a lot of women calling that foolishness out more and more. How come every time somebody says it's better to wait until you're married before you have kids, people are always like, well, he can still leave you even if you're married. He can still leave you even if Duh! Slow. Duh. Slow. The same way you can still die in a car accident, even if you have your seatbelt on. But it's probably still a good idea to put that seatbelt on when you get in the car, right? Marriage protects you and gives you benefits that being a baby mama does not. Slow. Okay? They're slow. So if you want to be a baby mama, that's your call. You're grown. You can do whatever you want. But stop trying to make women who want to wait until they're married before they have kids sound like they're crazy. Thank you. Can you guys just, for a quick second, think about this, man. We live in a generation and time where what she just said right there is crazy. It's crazy to think that you should have a father in the home. 
before you have kids. You look crazy. <laughs> and the people who are in their right minds are the people who are out here busting cheeks, right? Um, planting seeds everywhere. Those are, the, those are the men who get praised and get picked because they have multiple baby mamas. These chicks are not sitting there going, no, stop. Nah, you know what they're saying. You know what they're saying. They like it. They love it. They want it. Until he's not there to help out. But to just think about how crazy that is, man. And now, the more my family grows, that shit sounds insane to me. I can't believe that the chicks who think like that, right? That the, the, the rebuttal of saying, yeah, but it could fail, that those people are raising kids. I can't believe it. So I took a three month break from work mm -hmm. and I did it for my mental health and I'm back at work and realizing it wasn't my job that was the issue is single motherhood. I am at the point of single motherhood where I'm mad as hell. I'm pissed off. And I feel like hate is a weak emotion, but that's the only way to describe how I feel towards my child's father. I hate that man and I wish nothing but the worst for him. anyone associated with him as well. Him, anyone associated that helps condone his deadbeat behavior. I wish nothing but the worst for you guys. I can't just get up and go. I can't do whatever I want to do. I can't even sleep in. Something as simple as sleeping in a few hours. I can't do it. I don't need, I couldn't even do it during my break from work. I was still in go. Mommy mode the whole time. I've been in go since I left that hospital and I'm tired of this shit. There needs to be resources to help give mom break or something. There aren't any. So I'm just this close to opting out. I'm this close. I understand that being a single mother comes with overwhelming responsibilities. And it's clear that you're going through an extremely tough time. However, it's important to acknowledge that placing all the blame on your child's father or the people associated with him isn't a productive way to heal or move forward. Everyone has agency over their own actions, including you. The choices you made that led to your current situation, whether in relationships or parenting, are ones that should be reflected upon, not simply dismissed as someone else's fault. By holding others accountable for your struggles, you're limiting your own ability to take control of your life and emotions. This doesn't mean the father is without fault, but it's crucial to recognize your own role in how things have unfolded. Healing begins when you take responsibility for the situation you find yourself in. Instead of focusing on resentment or wishing the worst for others, consider what steps you can take to create the life you want for both yourself and your child. Single parenthood is undoubtedly challenging, but resentment will not ease that burden. It only keeps you stuck in a cycle of anger. Your mindset and choices are within your control. How many of these videos need to be made by women who are talking about the challenges they're going through for other women to say, you know what, I hold the key and the power to my body. I don't need to let Pookie smash and get me pregnant or just any dude who doesn't really want to have kids. And if you're in the situation where you have had a kid outside of wedlock. There are people who make it work, but you got you have to have like a community around you, people who are willing to help. That's the best you can ask for, and it makes a huge difference. But if you don't have that, it makes sense to me that this chick is at her wit's end. It makes sense. Protect yourself. Fellas, protect your seed. Guys, listen, as always, I'm curious to know, what did you think? Comment down below. Till next time, I'm out. Peace.